Welcome to Measuring Success Right, the official podcast of the Marriott Student Review, a podcast for students by students, where we connect the leaders of tomorrow with the issues of today. Welcome, everyone, to the Measuring Success Right podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hawkins, and I have a very special guest today named Stuart Fott, who is an entrepreneur, business owner, and happens to be my uncle. So, Stu, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. What is going on? It's good to be here. Yeah, of course. Well, Stu, I kind of just wanted to jump in and get to know you a little bit more for our listeners, kind of get to know your background, how you got started as an entrepreneur, and currently what you're up to. Okay. So yeah, gosh, let's uh let's take it back, man. Um, so I went to uh I went to school in Provo. I didn't go to BYU, went to UVU back in the day. And uh, was graduating around two, was graduating in 2008. And so back then it was kind of a struggle to get a job, um, yeah. just because of the, the whole 08 recession thing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, recently graduated, uh, started looking around for a job. Um, I had a neighbor that was working at a dental software company, mm-hmm. um, out there in Utah and American fork. It was kind of like the market leader for dental software. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyways, through through that neighbor connection, went to work for this company called Dentrix. And dude, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Honestly, it was a total nightmare. I, uh, you know, um, it was like a total office like meme. Like there's a movie back in the day. Have you ever seen the movie Office Space by chance? I haven't, but I can understand the reference. Yes, you got it. You got to research it. Check it out. Basically, my life was like this movie Office Space. I was in the cubicle, um, super depressing. Like it it just was not it for me. And so I'm like, you know, basically, uh, looking for other opportunities, but again, it was a recession. So it wasn't like super easy to jump to another, another job. And so, um, I was, uh, doing sales at this company and I started, you know, selling products to, to dental offices and I thought, well, you know, I don't like working in in the corporate, doing the whole corporate kind of office dude thing. And so uh, I I did like I did like working with dentists, though. I was like, this is kind of a cool niche. There's there's I think there's room to innovate within you know this this dental world. And so I started hearing about different opportunities, different things, and and then I started to hear about um, search engine optimization, so SEO, so. Back then, this was around 2009, 10. This was like, uh, like a newer thing. And so I thought, you know what? I'm already selling stuff to dentists. Like this SEO thing, you know, web marketing thing seems to be, you know, a thing. And I wonder if I could just go and start my own little SEO company for dentists. And so while I was, um, you know, still working at the job, uh, I would, you know, whenever I had a spare moment, I'd run around to, to dental offices mm-hmm. and put together a little $300 a month, uh, you know, web marketing package for dentists. And I just went office to office and figured out a way to get past the gatekeeper and, and <laughs> uh, sign up the dentist for a little web marketing package. And uh, before I knew it, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like I have like, I don't know how many customers it was, but it exceeded the amount that I was making at my uh, at my corporate job. And so I quit and I was like, man, this is awesome. And really had no clue what I was doing. Um, just ran out and signed up a bunch of, uh, a bunch of dental practices. And nice. then from, from that experience, uh, you know, I, I realized, you know what, this whole SEO thing is quickly becoming saturated. And so I need to have something different that I can offer uh, because all of my my dental clients at the time were, you know, saying like, oh, dude, I'm getting bombarded with all these SEO guys calling me all the time. Mm, and I started, yeah, and I started um, at this time too, there was, you know, more people that were reading reviews and reviews were kind of becoming a, a thing like online reviews. And, and you know, I looked around and I, I realized that there wasn't really a company that was offering um, to help businesses get reviews. And I was working with dentists. And then, so I thought like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pivot from an SEO company 
uh, a diamond dozen SEO company to I'm going to, all I'm going to do is help dental practices get reviews. And that was, um, you know, like a, a pivotal, pivotal change in, in my career that, that really opened up a lot of doors. At that point, I, um, you know, created a system to help a dental practice get reviews. And, and then for the next, you know, gosh, like five, six, seven years, I just went out and I signed up a bunch of uh, dental practices with a small team. I, you know, we signed up a couple of thousand uh, businesses to help them get reviews and ended up turning into a really fun and, um, you know, interesting learning experience and a good little business. Wow. That sounds super successful. It's like the classic entrepreneur success story, don't you think? I think it was, um, yeah, I think it was kind of, I kind of had the experience where, you know, the first thing I tried kind of worked, you know, yeah. and so the, there was pros and cons to that, you know, I didn't realize how, how good uh, of a thing that I had. Mm -hmm. um, I was really just trying to, trying to make money and, and had no idea how to build a company or how to <laughs> really do anything. Totally. I was just out there kind of throwing stuff against the wall and ended up kind of becoming like a, a wild adventure. No, definitely. And one thing I really liked kind of in that story was, like you said, you kind of, the first thing you did hit and it was successful, but you quickly saw that there was potential in other aspects related to the business and that your original idea was getting saturated and instead of just keep pumping and trying to be the best one at that, you realized it's better to pivot and move on to something else. Do you think yeah. if you hadn't pivoted, you wouldn't have continued to find success in that first business idea? Yeah, I think 100%. I think, uh, I think as a business owner and entrepreneur, it's super important that you, you, know, you're, you remain flexible and, and not too fixated on, on one certain path or thing. Um, but really, you know, that you choose that you choose a customer, choose a niche that you really enjoy, understand, and you like to deal with those people. And then just kind of let the people tell you what they want. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, uh, it's always much easier if you just simply, and it's, it's ironic, because, you know, many entrepreneurs, they come up with an idea, and then they just with brute force, try to get that into the market. Mm -hmm. When in reality, uh, any any experienced entrepreneur will tell you, you know, all you all you really need to do is go and interview a hundred of those types of customers and let them tell you exactly what they need, what they'd pay for, how much they'd pay for it, and all those good things. Yeah, one hundred percent. I was going to say the same exact thing. Like, I feel like a lot of people, especially young entrepreneurs, think of an idea, they fall in love with it, and never want to leave it or change it because they feel like it's their baby. And I feel like that hinders them, them a lot. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. People, you know, they get fixate, fixated on a thing and, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's just not going anywhere. And it's like, you have to make changes. And yeah, most of the time, lots of entrepreneurs aren't, but, you know, like I said, it's like, you just have to continue to, um, you know, to be flexible and, and pivot when you need to. But I think, I think even, even more of a pitfall than that, I think most entrepreneurs, um, you know, just never get started. Mm. So I think, I think that's the big thing that keeps people out of, out of the market. It's just like the, you know, uh, I don't know if it's fear. I don't know if it's they they think they have to have everything uh, ready to go before they even start. Um, but I think that's, I think that's the biggest draw with, with many, uh, people becoming entrepreneurs. No, definitely. And one thing that kind of came to my mind when you were saying that is one of my professors was talking about this, the same exact idea and how people are always putting it off and people always ask their students like, Oh, what are you going to do after college? And they're like, Oh, that's when I'm going to start my business. And it's like, why aren't you doing it now? Like, why aren't you just starting now and continuing your business after college? Like, it's not like you're going to graduate college and now be this amazing intellectual person who is going to be able to create a business. You should just start now. Right. <clears throat> exactly. You just have to, yeah, you just have to get started and, and understand that like everyone that gets started, like doesn't know anything. Like mm -hmm. you don't know anything. You're going to discover it along the way, but you're going to learn you know, by doing 
And I think the people that just jump in and, and uh, you know, start, if, if you do want to start a business and you see yourself as an entrepreneur, my recommendation is get started as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, especially when you're younger and you don't have like financial responsibilities and, you know, you've got less things potentially holding you back. It's like, just get started, mm-hmm. you know? And the other thing I would um, really stress is like, uh, and one thing that I was kind of late to the game at, I wish I would have, you know, found really competent mentors mm-hmm. earlier in the game. Um, so especially in the, you know, in the Provo area, gosh, there's so many competent, really awesome, uh, you know, mentors and people that have done great things. Um, the sooner that you can team up and, and uh, surround yourself with mentors, the better. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, one thing I was going to ask you was like, how do you come up with ideas? Are you, you know, a mentor man? Are you a book guy, podcast guy? Or like, how do you kind of channel that inner creativity to build this entrepreneurial mindset? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think some people are just quote unquote idea guys. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm, I kind of, you know, have realized through, through time that I'm, one of those guys, I'm an idea guy. And so for me, I think I draw inspiration and different ideas. Um, uh, mostly honestly, when I'm exercising, so Mm -hmm. I'll I'll get most of my, um, ideas, uh, that come to me through like just when I'm mountain biking. Mm. (laughs) Um, yeah. So, so I think that, I I think there's certain people that are kind of creative, that way and if you're not that way i think it makes sense to maybe team up with a partner uh that is but mm-hmm. then once you have an idea um to really cultivate that idea into a potential opportunity um you know most pe- people will talk to their their mom and their you know husband or wife and friends and family and and get really great feedback um uh, but forget to actually talk to the market and yeah. so the idea is you get an idea and then bring it to the market and ask the people that you'd like to sell that thing to if, if it is interesting. And if so, you know, can we package it with anything else? Like, and just really validate um, the idea. That's, I guess the message I would like to get out there to your audience is once you do have an idea really doesn't mean much until it's validated by an audience. And then once it is validated, doesn't really mean much until you execute and you actually do the work to get it in, get the product out there into the market. Mm, Smart. And as you've explained, you have had that network of dentists that you bring your ideas to. What other ways can entrepreneurs really test their ideas in the market? Um, Yeah, it's it's just by just by talking to customers. Um, So like one simple thing that you can do is if you have an idea for a certain type of, uh, you know, business, think about what type of what type of people, or if you're going, you know, B2B, um, what type of businesses could benefit from that idea? And then just go and interview a hundred of those business owners and, you know, um, just, just show up and try to schedule interviews. Just try to talk to people. Yeah. And, you know, through those conversations, you'll be able to uncover everything you need to know, whether that idea is like, you know, it's, a uh, it's like a 10 out of 10 or if it's like a four out of, you, you know what I mean? And you really want to go to the market with something that really blows people's minds. And, um, you know, out of the 100 people that you interviewed, you know, if everyone's like, Oh my gosh, I love that. Like I would absolutely buy that. Um, ask them to put down a credit card. So it's one thing if you validate, uh, ideas, many times the founder will go to go to potential customers and, They'll think, oh, this is a nice guy or a nice, nice girl. Like, I don't want to offend them. Yeah, your idea is great, you know? And so, so yeah, you just have to be, be careful about, uh, be careful about that. But, but basically, if you're looking to validate something, uh, it's a different conversation if you ask for a payment versus just think my idea is cool. And so I recommend actually asking people to, to put down a credit card, you know, for that thing. And once it's available, then, you know, they're all signed up, ready to go, you know, ready to pay for it. That's that's when you really know you have something, something solid. Oh, definitely. I think that's smart. I mean, just me doing sales, I can definitely see from experience that that conversation of, oh, that's a cool thing to then, okay, do you want to buy it is definitely 
definitely different different totally yeah exactly yeah well one thing i wanted to ask you as well is you know in this world of being an entrepreneur it can definitely have its highs and lows when you do hit those lows what do you do to stay motivated and when you're in the highs how do you stay motivated to keep coming up with ideas yeah so so i think (laughs) i think you really you really just have to want it Right. And so if you do want to take the entrepreneurial path, you want to be a business owner, you just have to know, um, you know, there are going to be extreme highs and lows and you have to be the type of person that um, really wants it because I honestly feel like the lows will, you know, they, they'll wipe everyone out that isn't really, really there because they really, really want to be a business owner, want to be an entrepreneur and don't just love the game. And so I think, uh, I think if, if, if you do want to be an entrepreneur, yeah, you have to be aware that there are going to be those things and, and, uh, it's not for everyone, but mm-hmm. you know, for me, it's, it's, I love it. It's the only thing, um, I can ever see myself doing. And so for me, it's not really, uh, you know, uh, a ch- hasn't ever really been a challenge. Like, you know, what keeps me motivated? This is just who I am and what I love to do. And yeah. so, I don't really deal with, with the whole motivation thing. Uh Um, but yeah, I think, I I think if you are thinking about being an entrepreneur, um, you know, just, just try it and it's not for everyone, but for the people that it is, um, it's amazing. Uh, when, when times are good, uh, just know that like, Hey, you know, times, everything's cyclical. So if the business is doing really well and things are going great, Make sure you don't overextend yourself and make sure you don't, um, you know, go crazy because around the corner, you know, who knows what's going to happen. And so I think just being steady when times are good and then just knowing things will pass when times are maybe a little bit tougher uh, goes a long way. But um, if you're someone that always like is looking for ways to motivate yourself, I don't I don't think that you should be an entrepreneur. I just I, I, I think it would be too difficult honestly. No, 100%. Because I've just seen you throughout life, you know, like you said, getting out there, making it happen. And yeah, what I think about too, is like at the beginning, when you you started your very, very first business, getting those dental office, you had another job that you were doing, you easily could have been like, Oh, I'm just gonna do this job. And then if I have extra time, I'll do it. And then end up never doing it. But you whenever you had extra time, just went hit the streets, which like you said, is yeah, that you need yeah yeah and um yeah it's just one of those things that it, i just always you know um yeah you just got to really want it and i think for those entrepreneurs that that's who they are and and they really go for it it's there's unbelievable opportunity out there it's absolutely insane i've seen um you know myself do do things that i never thought were possible i've seen other others around me do you know, the craziest things ever guys that are super young, right out of college. And so, yeah, I would never underestimate the potential that's out there. And, and I would say if, if it's calling your name, just get out there and, and give it a go, get mentors around you and, and just start the journey. Amazing. I love that advice. So Stu, the next few questions I have for you are related to the business school at BYU And these are questions that we also ask every single one of our guests. So it's cool to see the insights of all of the guests. Um, So the first question is related to the business school's vision, which is we aspire to transform the world through Christ-like leadership. How have you implemented this idea in your life and what are the fruits of it? First thing I think of with Christ-like leadership is being a person of integrity. And in business, there's just a ton of opportunity to cut corners and, and, you know, maybe not be super honest with certain things and not fulfill commitments that you make. And and so I think if you want to be a Christ-like uh, leader, I think the first and foremost thing is, is uh, just having integrity when people are looking, when people aren't looking, just have integrity, fulfill your commitments, you know, honor those around you and just be very upfront and honest with people. And, and I think by doing that, uh, you'll get more opportunities You'll, you'll build your reputation so people know that they can, they can trust you as a boss, as a, you know, as an employee, as, 
you know, as an entrepreneur and more and more opportunities come to those people that have integrity over time. Great. I love that answer. I've noticed a lot of people who are in the business world and entrepreneurs have said almost the same exact thing that being a person of integrity is crucial if you want to be a trusted person in the business world. Making a business work requires partners. It requires so many different people that, yeah, if you don't have integrity, if you're not a good person that people want to work with and can trust, it, it's just, it's never going to happen. So yeah, just being that person of honor and uh, having integrity is, is everything. Yeah, definitely. So the next question is kind of related to that. The mission of the business school is we develop leaders. What are some attributes of these leaders? What do they look like and how can we become them? I mean, one of the first things that comes to mind is, is a self-starter. You know, I think the world, and I think, you know, if you want to be in business, you have to be a self-starter. You have to do things without being told. You have to come up with ideas. You have to find your own inspiration and go and execute. Yeah. I think that's really what, what it, what it takes. No, definitely. I kind of think of the same little motto that I have is you just have to make it happen. Because like you said, if you don't go out there and do it, no one else is going to, especially as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I think there's so many, there's so much mystery when you're a young person about, uh, about business and how to be successful. And, you know, people use fancy words and, you know, really in, you know, long story short, they make it more complicated than it actually is. Yeah. Um, I wish someone when I was younger sat me down and just told me, you know what, Stuart, like really a business is it's simple. You have a thing, you find a customer, and you and you sell them that thing. You do it over and over and over again, and that's literally it. So anyone can do it. It's not complicated. The most successful businesses are the ones that are super simple. I mean, the first one that comes to mind is In and Out. <laughs> you know, when you go and to In and Out, it's like they've been doing the same thing for years and years and years, but they just execute and they've done it well and they've created all of this value in the market from just one simple thing. Yeah, I love it. Super smart. Um, another question we have is related to the values of the business school. Um, so the different values are faith in Christ, integrity in action, respect for all, and excellence. Why do you think these are important? And does one of these stand out to you? And do you have an experience with these values? Faith in Christ I think when you have faith in Christ, um, it gives your life purpose mm -hmm. and understanding of, you know, who we are, what our potential is, where we come from. I think it is very, very helpful um, as, you know, as a, as a leader in business, um, if you have a, a purpose and you have a greater, you know, <laughs> if you go on the internet, they'll say, you got to know your why, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, but it's true. And, and so I think faith in Christ really helps just create purpose for men and women. Integrity, we talked about that. If you don't have integrity, it shows and people are not going to want to sign up for your product. People are not going to want to work with you for you, you know, partner with you, all those, all those good things. And then what was the other one? Respect for all and excellence. Respect for, for all and excellence. Yeah. I love all those attributes. I think, you know, when I think of my mentors, when I think of the best leaders that I've had interaction with, they, they definitely have all those attributes and qualities. And those are awesome things to, to strive for. Perfect. Love that answer. Well, Stuart, we're getting to the last question. And this is like the big question we always ask people. Um, so you can answer it, you know, however you like, wh whether it's related to business or in your personal life. But the question okay. is, how do you measure success? Yeah, I think this is a really important question. Um, I think it's one that makes sense to really revisit every now and then, because many times, you know, we're running around, we're trying to achieve our goals. And then when we actually sit down and think about it, it's like, really, what I want is these different things. And it may or may not be totally different than, than what you're working towards. So success to me is just, you know, it's just balance. It's balance, it's having peace and security with your friends and family, and it's progress. You know, so success to me is being excited about what I'm doing, feeling like 
I'm meeting and exceeding like my, re- my responsibilities with my, with my family and just progressing. Many times people are almost like disappointed when they get to a goal hmm. and, and then they, they realize like, oh, it's all about the journey. It's all about like progress and the, the happiest times that I've had and the most fulfilled times I've had were when I was excited about something I was working towards, making small progress towards it every single day and finding you know ways to achieve that that goal that i had in mind so it's just progress having balance feeling like i'm progressing so i think i think to me that that's that's success to me perfect i think that's something that we all could strive for more in our life like the balance between between everything that we're trying to that we're trying to manage right so. totally totally and just be just getting super clear about what what you actually want because for example, it's, it's interesting, but you know, many times entrepreneurs, they think like, okay, well, if I want to be quote unquote successful, you know, I have to have this huge company. I have to um, raise tons of money is another thing. I have to do this, that, and the other thing. But then when you think about it, it's like, no, that's actually not, that may or may not be true, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think it's just getting really, really clear about what it is that you want in your life, where you want to live your life, like what type of work you want to be doing on a daily basis. It's just really important to think about those things, put them on paper, and then make an actionable plan to to achieve it. Well, Stuart, that's all the questions I have for you. Is there any other advice that comes to mind that you want to give to our you know, beginning entrepreneurs or already successful business owners? Yeah. Yeah. I just think I just think it's really important that everyone understands their potential is is bigger than they realize. There's so many opportunities out there. It's crazy. I, I think whatever it is that you're most excited about, I think you should pursue those things. Many times when, you know, younger people are looking for a career, they think, oh, well, I got to do this, you know, quote unquote, practical thing because, you know, really what I want to do, it's, that's not practical because, you know, my whoever said that it wasn't right. Totally and so I, I would encourage young people to really think about what your, what your dreams are and absolutely just go after your dreams. Like from day one, start working on your dreams. You're going to have so much fun while you're doing it. Surround yourself with, with different, you know, mentors that can help you get there that have already done the thing. And then just try to enjoy the journey. Don't cut corners uh, everything is hard. Everything takes time. You might as well uh, be working on whatever that is that you're really, really, really excited about. And that would be my advice. Perfect. Great advice. Well, thanks again, Stuart, for coming on. I appreciate it. This is a really good episode. And I think our listeners really are going to enjoy it. Anytime. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or SoundCloud so you never miss an episode. Be a friend and tell a friend about measuring success right. This podcast is a project of the Marriott Student Review at Brigham Young University. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Marriott Student Review or online at MarriottStudentReview.org. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect official policy or position of Brigham Young University or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.